listening to the Holy Bible One Year Challenge with master storyteller Michael Wood, featuring the easy to read version and used by permission from Bible Week International. Enjoy the show! Hello, everyone. Welcome to day 120. We are continuing in the book of Joshua, and we are in the process of dividing the land. And most of the land has been divided except for seven tribes. So, for those seven tribes, we're going to leave it to God, which basically means using a random drawing to determine who gets what. But besides all the geographical details and all the names of all the different cities, there's a few interesting moments in Joshua 17 and 18. And one is where one of the descendants of Manasseh named Zelophehad, he didn't have any sons. He only had daughters. And it's interesting to see when they assert their right to have the same amount of land as their male relatives. And then we are continuing in John. And we're still in chapter one. And Jesus appears. And remember, we skip the nativity. And we don't see Jesus as a little boy running around the temple. When he comes into the scene in the book of John, he is the son of God right out the door, sanctioned and blessed. And John the Baptist basically steps to the side and Jesus immediately starts gaining followers. And there's a great moment when two of the followers of John the Baptist see Jesus and then change gears and sign up to be the followers of Jesus instead. So stay with us as we go through this journey and refer to the show notes to follow along. If you enjoy the show, visit me at patreon.com forward slash story master. You'll find the link in the description box below. By contributing as little as $1 per month, you will enable me to continue this ministry. And you'll get cool rewards too. Together, we're going to get through the Bible in one year. Let's get started. Joshua chapter 17. The land was given to the tribe of Manasseh. Manasseh was Joseph's first son. Manasseh's first son was Machir, the father of Gilead. Machir was a great soldier, so the areas of Gilead and Bashan were given to his family. Land was also given to the other families in the tribe of Manasseh. These families were Abiezer, Helek, Azrael, Shechem, Hefer, and Shemida. All these men were the other sons of Manasseh, the son of Joseph. The families of these men got their share of the land. Zelophehad was the son of Hefer. Hefer was the son of Gilead. Gilead was the son of Machir, and Machir was the son of Manasseh. Zelophehad did not have any sons, but he had five daughters. The daughters were named Mala, Noah, Agla, Milka, and Tirsa. The daughters went to Eleazar the priest, Joshua son of Nun, and all the leaders. The daughters said, The Lord told Moses to give us land the same as our male relatives. So they obeyed the Lord and gave the daughters some land, just like their uncles. So the tribe of Manasseh had ten areas of land west of the Jordan River and two more areas of land, Gilead and Bashan, on the other side of the Jordan River. So these women from the tribe of Manasseh got land the same as the men. The land of Gilead was given to the rest of the families of Manasseh. The lands of Manasseh were in the area between Asher and Migmethath. This is near Shechem. The border went south to the end Tapua area. The land around Tapua belonged to Manasseh, but the town itself did not. The town of Tapua was at the border of Manasseh's land, and it belonged to the people of Ephraim. The border of Manasseh continued south to Cana Ravine. This area belonged to the tribe of Manasseh, but the cities belonged to the people of Ephraim. Manasseh's border was on the north side of the river, and it continued west to the sea. The land to the south belonged to Ephraim, and the land to the north belonged to Manasseh. The sea was the western border. The border touched Asher's land in the north and Issachar's land in the east. The people of Manasseh had towns in the area of Issachar and Asher. Beth Sheen, Ibliam, and the small towns around them also belonged to them. The people of Manasseh also lived in Dor, Endor, Tanak, Megiddo, and the small towns around these cities. 
They also lived in the three towns of Napha. The people of Manasseh were not able to defeat those cities. So, the Canaanites continued to live there. But the Israelites grew strong. When this happened, they forced the Canaanites to work for them. But they did not force them to leave that land. The descendants of Joseph came to Joshua and said, Why did you give us only one area of land? We need more than that, because the Lord has continued to bless us with so many people. Joshua answered them, If the hill country of Ephraim is too small for all of you, go up to the wooded area there and clear that land for a place to live. That's where the Perizzites and the Raphaites now live. The people of Joseph said, Even if we had all the hill country, it is not large enough for us. And the Canaanites living down in the valley are too powerful for us with their iron chariots. They control Jezreel Valley, Beth Sheen, and all the small towns in that area. Then Joshua said to the people of Joseph, the tribes of Ephraim and Manasseh, You have many people, and you are very strong, so you should get more than one share of the land. You will take these mountains. It is a forest, but uh, you can cut down the trees and make it a good place to live. You can take it from the Canaanites and force them to leave. You can defeat them, even if they are strong and have iron chariots. Joshua chapter 18, dividing the rest of the land. All the Israelites gathered together at Shiloh, where they set up the meeting tent. The Israelites controlled that country they had defeated all the enemies in that land. But at this time, there were still seven tribes of Israel that had not yet received their land. So Joshua said to the Israelites, Why do you wait so long to take your land? The Lord, the God of your ancestors, has given this land to you. Choose three men from each of your tribes. I will send them out to explore the land and describe it in writing. Then they will come back to me with their report of how they want the land to be divided among them. The land should be divided into seven parts. The people of Judah will keep their land in the south. The people of Joseph will keep their land in the north. But you should describe the seven parts of the land and bring the report to me. I will throw lots to let the Lord our God decide how to divide the land among the tribes. The Levites don't get a share of the land. Their share is to serve the Lord as priests. Gad, Reuben, and the half-tribe of Manasseh have already received the land that was promised to them. They are on the east side of the Jordan River. The Lord's servant Moses gave them that land. So the men who were chosen got ready to go and explore the land. Joshua told them, Go through the land and describe it in writing. Then come back to me at Shiloh with your report. I will throw lots and let the Lord decide how you will share the land. So the men went into the land as they walked through it, they wrote down what they saw. They listed all the cities and divided the land into seven parts. Then they went back to Joshua at Shiloh. Joshua threw lots for them in front of the Lord at Shiloh. In this way, Joshua divided the land and gave each tribe its part of the land. Land for Benjamin The tribe of Benjamin was given the land that was between the areas of Judah and Joseph. Each family in the tribe of Benjamin got its land. This is the land that was chosen for Benjamin. The northern border started at the Jordan River and went along the northern edge of Jericho. Then the border went west into the hill country. It continued until it was just east of Beth Avon. Then the border went south to Luz, or Bethel, then down to Adaroth Adar. Adaroth Adar is on the hill south of lower Beth Haran. At the hill south of Beth Haran, the border turned south and went along the west side of the hill. The border went to Kiriath Baal, also called Kiriath Jerim, a town that belonged to the people of Judah. This was the western border. The southern border started near Kiriath Jerim and went to the spring of Nephtoa. Then the border went down to the bottom of the hill near the valley of Ben Hanam, north of Rephaim Valley. It continued down Hinnom Valley, just south of the Jebusite city. Then the border went on to En Rogel. There it turned north, went to En Shemesh, and then continued on to Gililoth. Gililoth is near the Adamim Pass in the mountains. The border went down to the great stone that was named for Bohan, 
the son of Reuben. It continued to be the northern part of Beth Arabah. Then the border went down into the Jordan Valley. Then it went to the northern part of Beth Hogla and ended at the north shore of the Dead Sea. This is where the Jordan River flows into that sea. That was the southern border. The Jordan River was the eastern border. So this was the land that was given to the tribe of Benjamin. These were the borders on all sides. One area given to the families of the tribe of Benjamin included these cities. Jericho, Beth Hagla, Emek Kaziz, Beth Harabah, Zamarain, Bethel, Avim, Para, Ophra, Kafar, Amani, Afni, and Geba. In all, there were 12 cities with the villages around them. The other area included these cities, Gibeon, Ramah, Birah, Mizpah, Kephara, Mosa, Rechem, Erpil, Tarala, Zela, Haleph, the Jebusite city, that is, Jerusalem, Gabeah, and Kiriah. In all, there were 14 cities with the villages around them. This was the land that was given to the families of Benjamin's tribe. John chapter 1, verses 29 to 51. Jesus, the Lamb of God. The next day, John saw Jesus coming towards him and said, Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. This is the one I was talking about when I said, Someone is coming after me who is greater than I am, because he was there in the beginning, long before I was born. I did not know then who he was, but I came baptizing people with water so that the people of Israel could know that he is the Messiah. Then John said this for everyone to hear. The one who sent me to baptize people with water told me, you will see the spirit come down and rest on a man. He is the one who will baptize with the Holy Spirit. I have seen this happen. I saw the Spirit come down from heaven like a dove and rest on this man. I did not know until then who the Messiah was. So this is what I tell people. He is the Son of God. The first followers of Jesus. The next day, John was there again and had two of his followers with him. He saw Jesus walking by and said, Look, the Lamb of God. The two followers heard him say this, so they followed Jesus. Jesus turned and saw the two men following him. He asked, What do you want? They said, Rabbi, where are you staying? Rabbi means teacher. He answered, Come with me and you will see. So the two men went with him and saw the place where he was staying. It was then about four o'clock, and they stayed there with him the rest of that day. These men followed Jesus after they had heard about him from John. One of them was Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter. The first thing Andrew did was to go and find his brother Simon. Andrew said to him, We have found the Messiah. Messiah is the Hebrew word for Christ. Then Andrew brought Simon to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, You are Simon, the son of John. You will be called Cephas. Cephas means Peter. The next day, Andrew wanted them to go to Galilee. He found Philip, and Jesus said to him, Follow me. Philip was from the town of Bethsaida, the same as Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and told him, We have found the man that Moses wrote about in the law. The prophets wrote about him too. He is Jesus, the son of Joseph. He is from Nazareth. But Nathanael said to Philip, Nazareth, can anything good come from Nazareth? Philip answered, well, come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming towards him and said, this man coming is a true Israelite, one you can trust. Nathanael asked, how do you know me? Jesus answered, I saw you when you were under the fig tree, before Philip told you about me. 
Then Nathaniel said, Teacher, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus said to him, Do you believe this just because I said I saw you under the fig tree? You will see much greater than that. Then he said, Yes, believe me when I say that you will all see heaven open. You will see angels of God going up and coming down on the Son of Man. Proverbs chapter 10, verses 31 to 32. Proverbs of Solomon. Those who do what is right say wise things, but people stop listening to troublemakers. Good people know the right things to say, but the wicked say things to make trouble. Proverbs chapter 11, verses 1 through 8. The Lord hates false scales, but he loves accurate weights. Proud and boastful people will be shamed, but wisdom stays with those who are modest and humble. Good people are guided by their honesty, but crooks who lie and cheat will ruin themselves. Money is worthless when you face God's punishment, but living right will save you from death. Doing right makes life better for those who are good, but the wicked are destroyed by their own wicked ways. Doing right sets honest people free, but people who can't be trusted are trapped by their greed. When the wicked die, all their hopes are lost. Everything they thought they could do comes to nothing. Good people escape from trouble, but the wicked come along and are trapped by it. Thank you, everyone. That was day 120. Join us for day 121. We learn about land for Simeon, Zebulun, Asakar, Asher, Naphtali, Dan, and Joshua. We'll learn about the establishment of cities of safety and the towns set up for priests and Levites. And in the New Testament, there is a wedding at Cana and everyone is out of wine. And that's where we see Jesus perform one of his first miracles in the book of John. We hope you enjoyed today's verses. Be sure to leave us a positive review and to share this podcast with your friends and family. Please join us for the next episode as we experience the Bible in one year. Did you know we offer online courses in creative writing, literature, and web design? Visit us at storymaster.online to learn more.